Hey church, glad to be with you for another encouraging word. I want to just encourage you today. I have a couple different passages I want to look at. But you know what's been interesting is I've been, uh, if you're a TV person right now, for example, if you enjoy watching, you turn on, you're scrolling through the channels, and whenever you go by a news channel, I just want to just skip right on by it because it seems like no matter what you do, all you turn on and it seems like bad news and difficult and uh, there's all kinds of things going on and you just rather do something else, frankly. Uh, you know, in times filled like this that are filled with turmoil, uh, peace is scarce. It seems like anxieties are, are very high. Suicides are, at a, are very high right now. Worry is everywhere. And it can be very difficult to be positive. Uh, even though I'm a positive guy, it can still be difficult sometimes to be positive. And the story I want to tell you today is about a guy named Paul. There was also a guy named Silas with him in the story. Uh, it begins in the book of Acts and then it ends in the book of Philippi, which was a book that was written to, um, it's called Philippians, but it was written to the people who lived in the town of Philippi. And so it involved a guy named Paul. Now, Paul was an apostle uh, of Jesus, and he was a great, maybe the greatest missionary that ever lived as he spread the gospel at the beginning of the church. In Acts 16, we see Paul and his buddy Silas, and they're out preaching and telling people about Jesus in the town of Philippi, and they started to be successful. Matter of fact, they were so successful uh, that the local authorities discovered them and threw them in jail because of all the things that were going on. So I want to read to you just a little passage from chapter uh, Acts uh, chapter 16. It says this, this is what happened after they were thrown in jail. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now this is after they were beaten and thrown into jail and the other prisoners were listening to them. I love this, you know, uh, positivity, uh, joy of God is absolutely encouraging and it's catchy as well. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. All at once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. And if the prisoners would have escaped, he would have been executed either way. But Paul shouted to him, don't harm yourself, we are all here. Now that seems crazy to me. Uh, all these prisoners, they could have escaped, they could have got out, but they stayed. They stayed because of Paul and because of his witness to them. So he told the jailer, hey, we're all here. So the jailer called for the lights, he rushed in, he fell trembling before Paul and Silas. And this is his response. His response in difficult times, in a time where he thought his life could possibly be at stake, what he saw through the people of God, changed his life then and forever. He brought them out and he asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Because of the incredible testimony of Paul and Silas in jail. Now, shortly after that, they got out of jail and uh, they ended up moving on to other towns to be in, speak the gospel to other places. And we bring it back in the book of Philippians. This is 10 years later now. Paul is actually in prison in Rome and he's in, in Rome virtually awaiting his execution. And he's in Rome and he wrote to the people in Philippi because he wanted to encourage them and thank them for all the things that they'd done for him. So here's what he says. Uh, this is the end of the letter that Paul wrote to them. Uh, remember a lot of these epistles in the New Testament, they're actually just letters. And so he wrote this letter and in the very end of it, uh, his final words of encouragement to them were this. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. Always be positive. Paul was positive even jail. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And here's the great part of this whole thing. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As believers in Jesus, we can have a peace that transcends everything. It's beyond understanding. People look at you and go, how can you be so calm right now? Where everything's a mess, all this stuff is going on. How can you be calm? I can be calm because of the peace that Jesus brings in my life. 
I've told this story before, but uh, many years ago, back in 2005, uh, I had a heart attack and I was, I was only 36 years old and I was sitting in the hospital room and they're doing all this work. There's doctors and nurses running everywhere, doing all kinds of stuff. And it was amazing to me that it was like the peace of God just came over me. All this going on, I should have been super nervous. The doctor was nervous, I'll tell you that. He was really worried. But the peace of God came over me in an unexplainable way. And that same peace that I had can be yours as well. If you put your trust, you put your hope, you put all of your worries, anxiety, put them upon Jesus and let him handle them. And the peace that goes beyond any understanding can be yours. Then he says this, Brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, is lovely, is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. During this time of difficulty, don't think about all the bad stuff. Concentrate on what God has done for you. Our family actually is doing a study of Romans, and it's cool. We do a Zoom. Uh, We're going to meet this uh, Tuesday evenings. We do a Zoom with the whole family. Everybody gets on, and we talk about Romans, and we just talk about what God is talking about telling us and about what God is doing in our lives. And it's an incredible thing. So use things like this during this time to think about the good things of God and to change your mind from being anxious and worries to being peaceful, having a peace that passes all understanding. Paul said this, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. Paul had the incredible peace of God in his life and he wanted us to have that as well put it into practice. And he ends with this. He says, and the God of peace will be with you. Hey, thanks for listening today. And may the God of peace be with you today and every day. God bless you guys. See you later.